Welcome back to uh, uh, NE uh, 630 nuclear reactor uh, analysis. So uh, we will start a new chapter today. It's not, um, it will not be included in the exam. It is about the two group methods. But before I start the chapter, let me give you some hints about problem number one in homework number four, because there is lots of students who came and asked about this. So um, you have the two equation, dn of t by dt equal to the source term plus rho minus beta divided by gamma multiplied by n plus lambda multiplied by c of t. And the second equation is just d by dt c of t equal to beta divided by gamma multiplied by n of t minus lambda c of t. So to give you just a few hints, use n of t um, equal to some a e to the power of omega omega t. Some, some of the students will use s, some of the students will use omega, whatever. So n of t and c of t also you will use as uh, some s multiplied by e to the power of omega t or b or c so that will be so let's make this n n of t equal to n and c of t equal to c multiplied by e to the power of omega t of course when you will substitute with those two equations in those on those two in the the two functions in the two equations you should get two equations in the form omega n equal to rho minus beta divided by gamma n plus lambda c and omega c equal to beta over gamma n minus lambda c. Then when you will solve this equation, those two equations, you should you should eliminate from here you should eliminate C for example so that you will get some second order uh, equation A omega square plus B omega plus plus D equal to some zero or whatever if those constants A, B and D will include will include from here, of course you will em eliminate from those two equations you will eliminate n and c and then when you will solve you will get only equation for omega. This equation for omega you will use the omega equal to minus b plus or minus b square minus 4ac or 4ad divided by 2a and then you will use the assumption that I give you so that you will reduce this and finally you will get omega 1 and omega 2. So we'll get two solutions. One for omega 1 will be something, omega 2 will be the other thing. Then now you want to calculate, you want to calculate, you will notice that you have two 2 omega, so n will be just n of t, will be just uh, some n1 e to the power of omega 1t plus n2 e to the power of omega 2t. Again, c of t will be the same, c1 e to the power of omega 1t plus c2 e to the power of omega 2t. So your goal now is to calculate what's n1, n2, c1, and c2. <coughs> so how you will figure out what's N1, N2, C1, C2, <coughs> and so on. So to give you a hint, if you eliminate from equation one and equation two, if you eliminate, you will get lambda C from here, and it will give you C and N. Then you will substitute with lambda C here, and then you will have a relation between C and N. So from one, from one and two, you can get a, a relation between 
C is equal to function of omega, beta, beta, lambda, gamma, or you will eliminate lambda. So gamma multiplied by n. You will get some function. So this, this function will give you the relation between C and n. And again, you can use the criticality condition that C at 0 is nothing more than beta over gamma lambda multiplied by n at 0. So if you get those two relations, and you will say at t equal to 0, n, n 0 equal to n1 plus n2, and c at 0 is equal to c1 plus c2. So when you will get this, uh, you have a relation like this here, and you have another relation that you can say c1 equal to something multiplied by n1, and c2 equal to something multiplied by uh, c2. Of course, this has omega, so when you say c1, it will be omega 1 and n1. And then, in this case, if you want to calculate it, you have again to use the same, the same assumption that uh, beta over lambda gamma is greater than 1, and beta minus rho over lambda gamma is greater than 1. So this will lead you to uh, neglect some of the term so that you will get n1 in terms of n at 0 and c1 in terms of c and 0 and then you will substitute you will get the relation that you have in the I will not go through everything I'm just giving you a hint this is it's not hint this is a mega hint so it's not small hint so Let's start with the new topic here. So again, to remind you of, of the course, we stated clearly that in order to solve the diffusion equation, uh, you have to know what's the, the diffusion equation constant or the diffusion constants, we call them. So um, the diffusion constants are just what? D sigmas and all the L and B square and so on. So all those constants and the equation itself, uh, we, in this class, we solved the diffusion equation in the assumption that it is in a uniform medium. And the first and utmost assumption is it's only one energy, one, one whole energy. So we average over the whole spectrum of energy energies yes of course when you will solve nobody solve try to solve the diffusion equation single energy or one energy or one group they call it one group diffusion equation for a nuclear reactor because you have especially for thermal reactors now you merge it everything you merge it the, the thermal energy with the fast energy and you come up with one value for sigma one value for nu one value for this and that and even the the resonance region you merge it and fuse it inside one energy. So usually people will not solve the one group diffusion equation. Usually they will solve multi-group diffusion equation. But to start and show you what's the multi-group diffusion equation, we have to start with another approximation and we we'll call it two-group method or two-group diffusion equation. So usually the one group is limited by the fact that the neutrons are lumped together in only one group. But a more accurate procedure for handling this and particularly the thermal reactors is to split the neutron into two groups. One is the fast energy or any energy above the thermal up to infinity and the other one is the thermal energy. And what was the cutoff for the thermal energy when we study the, the energy in the thermal region? What was the cutoff? In hmm? KT was what? You remember I, I bought you the the lining or overlapping equation to, to overlap or to join the one over e, uh, uh, behavior with the Maxwellian and I put you a function like between 5 kT and 10 kT. Do you remember? So be below 5 kT is, is totally 
Maxwellian above 5 kT, there is the merging between the Maxwellian and the 1 over A. So the cutoff usually will be 5 kT. Okay? Uh, 5 kT. So um, uh, if, if you do this, we will take the group number 1. So this is, this will not be covered in the exam. This is just for you guys. So we will pick up group number one. And this group number one will be the fast group. And it is greater than 5kt, nearly. I put this as nearly 5kt. And group number two, they call it the slow group and it is nearly less than the 5 kt so let's look for the slow slow group or sometimes they call it the thermal the thermal group when you that our equation is what? 1 over V D by DT V of energy A equal to what? The one group. Let's, let's write the one group. Equal to D nabla square V minus sigma absorption V plus nu sigma fission V plus any, any source that you have. So let's assume that there is no external source. So this is usually the diffusion one one group diffusion equation. One group diffusion equation. What does it mean? It's only one one energy. As if you have lumped everything in one energy. So in the thermal energy region, this is this is the general the general diffusion equation. This is not in the thermal. So the topic for slow or thermal uh, will, will come on in a, in a minute. But I'm just writing, writing the diffusion equation as a general diffusion equation, one, one group. This, is, this equation contains everything. Contains the flux. Contains the flux in the Maxwellian, in the 1 over E. This is the, the region that joined the Maxwellian with the 1 over E and then in the chi distribution. So you average over all energies, you obtain constants that are average over all energies. Okay guys? Now, let's look at the two group method and the approximations. In the thermal energy region, the flux was what? Phi thermal. And this phi thermal we will, we will name it phi 2, meaning it is the thermal flux in group number 2, and it is a function of the position R. So this is function of position R equal to this. How we will get the, 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 the flux in the, in the thermal energy region? We will average the flux as a function of R and energy E, dE, yes, <coughs> from 0 to what? from 0 to 5 kT. <coughs> okay, guys, so this is the total flux. I average over all energies. Okay, guys? And then I have to get also a diffusion, diffusion average thermal diffusion coefficient how to get it so we'll call it d2 and d2 is just the average of the thermal region and to get this one we have to do the averaging for the diffusion as a function of energy multiplied by the flux 
as a function of energy dE divided by the integration of E dE. And this will be from 0 to, to 5, nearly 5 kT. What's this, guys? Phi 2. So this is 1 over phi 2 multiplied by 0 to nearly 5 kT d of e phi of e dt. But in the thermal energy region, what's phi of e? It's what? Maxwellian of e dE. In a minute, I will tell you how we, how we produce this, but this will be given by a gamma function of m plus 2 multiplied by the diffusion coefficient evaluated at 293 at 1 electron volt multiplied by the temperature that you are operating at divided by the 293 raised to a power m. And what's the M parameter? We will see in a minute what's the M parameter and how we get this. So the M parameter is just in all, pretty much all the energy dependent cross section, the scattering cross section, the energy dependent cross section is almost constant in the thermal energy region. The energy cross section, the cross section energy is almost constant, except for the hydrogen, which is light water, and heavy water. The cross-section as a function of energy goes like sigma scattering as a function of E naught multiplied by E naught divided by E raised to the power of, of M. And this M, to give you some values, for H2O, M is equal to 0.47. And for D2O is um, 0.112. And E0 is just the 0.0253 electron volt, which is the average energy here. So D of E, you knew that D of E is proportional to what? The diffusion coefficient proportional to what? 1 over 3 sigma scattering. So you expect that D of E also has the same what? But it will be the inverse of this. Yes, guys? So this will be nearly d of e naught multiplied by e over e naught which is the inverse of this because the diffusion goes like 1 over 3 sigma scattering so if you take this formula let's call it 2 and let's call this formula 1 if you take 2 and substitute in one and use M of E is the Maxwellian which is E over KT multiplied by E. Okay guys? So what you will have? You will have D E naught which is constant will get out multiplied by E to the power of M divided by E naught to the power of M will get out. Yes, guys? And you have E to the power of M multiplied by what? By E. So this will give you E to the power of M plus M plus 1. And then you will divide over phi of E. Phi of E is just the integration of the, the, the Maxwellian flux. 
I wrote proportional to because there is some constant here. This constant will be eliminated from the constant, same constant that you will use in m of e up and m of e down. Okay? And if you solve this, you will find that you have e to the power of m plus 1, e to the power of minus e over kt, and this is the gamma function. Yes? But this would be gamma of what? m plus 2. You knew where, where we got this? Okay, gamma? Uh, okay, gamma. Ah. Okay, guys. So I call you gamma. Okay, gamma. Ah. This is the fate of any of you who will take PhD and go back to school. Work as a professor. You will lose your mind. Okay. So now you can also find sigma t2, which is just the absorption cross-section, the average absorption cross-section. And again, if you remember, in the previous uh, chapters, we said that the absorption cross-section sometimes will have the form of what? A 1 over E absorber. And if there is no, it's not 1 over E absorber, we can modify the cross-section by a function called G of T. And we call this G of T the non-1 over V correction factor. If you remember, we took it in the very early beginning. So when you, when you will average and substitute, you will get square root of pi over 2 multiplied by J absorption as a function of time, sigma absorption at the energy E naught, multiplied by T naught over T to the power of 1 half. And again, the G of T is just the non-1 over V factor. Non-1 over V factor. What does it mean? mean that the cross-section is not behaving as 1 over V. So we have to modify the cross-section so that it will take some, some form. And this modification factor is a temperature dependent. So this is the sigma 2. Of, of course, L, L2 square is nothing more than D2 over sigma 2. So what we did here, what we did, what we did is just prepare the cross-section for the thermal energy region. So we got the energy dependent of the cross-sections, the energy dependent of the diffusion coefficient. We knew that the diffusion coefficient, the energy dependent, can be defined from the energy dependent for the scattering cross-section. And we integrate this over the thermal energy region. We got some average D, some average sigma scattering, some average sigma absorption, and we got some average L in the thermal energy region. So we will do exactly the same in the fast energy region. So in the fast energy region, we will call it phi 1. And phi 1 is just, we will integrate now, the lower limit will be from 5 kT up to infinity of phi of E dE. What do you expect? What flux can be used in this energy region? Huh? Nope. I can use in this energy distribution, I can use the flux of, uh, of energy E as C over C average as a function of E multiplied by sigma scattering of E multiplied by E. Do you remember this? Yes? So we said that this was the flux in the slowing down region all the way up to 1 million electron volt. Yes, guys? And of course, you can... You can, you can say that I will, I will make it from 5 kT up to 1 MeV, and I will use what? I will use this. Then I will use it from 1 MeV up to 5 MeV, and I will use the, the chi distribution for the fast energy. Okay? But usually the, the, the cross sections is very low at, at the very high energy. Okay, guys? Again, you will do the same. So this will be what? 
this will be the one so this is from 5 kt to infinity and this is from 5 kt to infinity and we do not know the shape of d1 is not this so we do not know what's the shape of d1 okay guys and the flux of d1 of, of phi, phi 1 I just wrote the flux and if you divide d1 by sigma 1 you should get what in the fast energy region you should get what the age the Fermi age so this is Fermi age to thermal of fast neutrons because this tells, tells you this will tell you that the neutrons will burn fast and this is the age until they reach to what? to the thermal energy region so if you just look at the distribution this is infinity this is zero and we have the cutoff here 5 kT so we have two groups a fast group and a thermal group whatever you have it here born in fission slow down until it it gets into the thermal energy region or the thermal group now if we have let's assume we have a reactor that's composed of one dimension a slab surrounding by non-multiplying non-multiplying uh, reflector so this is the reactor core at x equal to zero this is the extrapolated distance and this is the extrapolated distance for this is the core and this is the reflector again so core and reflector so this two region thermal reactor will consist of homogeneous uh, core non-multiplying reflector usually in the thermal energy region the neutrons in the thermal energy region how the neutron will appear in the fast region the fission so if you have a thermal neutrons if it if it induce fission yes it will produce neutrons where in the fast energy region and how the fast will appear in the in the thermal slowing down so if you have fast neutrons in the fast region when they will slow down they should reach to the what thermal region so you will notice that we will have two diffusion equations and those two diffusion equations are coupled equations so if we have two groups we'll have two what two equations if we have three groups we'll have what three equations if we have n group we'll have n equations and in order to solve it in a group you have to solve n linearly coupled the differential equations and this comes the how you will solve those of course I will not solve anything I'm just showing you what happened okay so at point R in the reactor at point R in the reactor if you have sigma absorption if you have sigma absorption 2 
F C multiplied by phi 2 at R. What does it mean? Phi 2 is the thermal thermal flux thermal flux in, in the thermal energy. Sigma 2 is the average cross section in the thermal energy okay, of the fuel. Of what? Of the fuel inside the core. C is core and R is the reflector. So sigma 2 FC average absorption absorption cross section of fuel in the core. So what's this? This is the total number of neutrons absorbed in the core in the fuel. Yes? Total number of neutrons absorbed in the core in the fuel. If I multiply this by eta thermal, which is the thermal eta, eta now is average over the thermal energy region, and I multiply this by epsilon. This will give me what? What's eta? It's a new sigma fission from the fuel divided by sigma absorption in, in the fuel. Okay, if you multiply this by sigma fission, thermal plus sigma fission, fast. And this is thermal divided by sigma fission thermal let's let's say this is thermal so this will cancel with what with this what's this what's this yes if i multiply this by sigma absorption in the fuel so this will cancel this this will cancel this and I will have nu multiplied by sigma fission and the thermal plus sigma fission and the fast multiplied by the flux. What's this? This is eta epsilon sigma absorption phi. What's this? Total number of neutron generated from both fast and thermal fission as a result as a result of sigma absorption phi. So if you have sigma absorption phi is one million neutrons, you get, you get from those one million neutrons that, that's being absorbed in the fuel, you get, let's say, 1.5 million neutrons generated because of fast fission and thermal fission. Okay, guys? Okay, so what's this? Those are the total number of neutrons Yes, produced from fission as a result of absorption at point what? R. So in the thermal energy region, you got absorbed at point R, and the absorption at this point R was what? Sigma 2 Fc, which means the absorption in the fuel in the core and the flux 2 in the core, in the thermal energy region. So this is the total absorption at point what? R. This total absorption at point R leads you eta, epsilon, sigma, phi, fast neutrons in the fast group. So this is the absorption in the what? In the thermal energy region. And this is the production in the fast energy region. Do you understand? I think that there some of you are confused. Do you want me to reiterate again and say it again? Say it again. Okay. Phi 2 is the flux in this energy. Phi 
5 kT 0 somewhere here here this is just the energy domain I'm not talking about the, the special domain let's assume I, I will put the special I superimpose it over energy so this will be the core and this will be the reflector inside the core somewhere at point R or point X here I have sigma 2 FC multiplied by phi 2 what does it mean? It means the total number of neutrons absorbed at this location R at this location R they are absorbed at the thermal energy because this is sigma 2 is the, th is the thermal energy cross-section absorption cross-section and they are absorbed in the what? in the fuel this is why I put what? F and they are absorbed where? in the core not in the reflector because there is no multiplying material in the what? reflector but for every one neutron that you get absorbed if you will multiply those If I ask you, you have sigma 2 fuel in the core multiplied by phi of R. Those are the neutrons that are absorbed in the thermal energy region. Okay, how many of those, for example, will be absorbed in the fuel? Then you will say, the number that's absorbed in the, uh, those absorbed in the fuel, how many induce fission? So you will say, I will multiply by what? Sigma fission divided by what? Sigma absorption, which is this one. In this case, I will call sigma absorption 2FC. Okay? And this will give me what? The fraction that's being inducing fission. Not all absorption will induce fission. There is radiative capture, it will not induce anything. And there is portion that induce fission. What's the fraction that will induce fission? This. From every fission, you produce new neutrons. Yes? So those are, are what? Total number of neutrons induced from thermal fission. But I'm telling you, I'm not only inducing thermal fission. I'm inducing thermal as well as what? Fast. So in this case, I have to modify this cross-section for the fission, which is the thermal, and I have to multiply it by what? Both thermal plus what? Fast. So this will cancel with this. This, this will leave it alone. This will cancel with what? With this, and you multiply new. So at the end, you will have phi of R multiplied by sigma fission fast and thermal multiplied by new which is the total number of neutrons that will be produced as what? As fast. Because they are produced from the fission. But what's this? Epsilon. And what's this? Eta. So eta multiplied by epsilon multiplied by this will give you what? Total number of neutrons produced in the thermal energy region as a result of fission. Why? Because when you produce fission, you have the chi distribution. So you are in the fast energy region. So although you are absorbed as a thermal in the thermal energy region, but you are generated as what? As a fast, then you have to do what? You have to slow down until you come where? To the, to the thermal energy region again. To tell you uh, as a good example. Assume, assume that we have a community or society and just old ladies that will be permitted to be pregnant not not uh, young ladies so in this case old old male and female will get pregnant will married get pregnant then they will they will breed but when they will breed they will produce what babies they are not fast they are not slow as parents they are very fast energetic so they will be born here. Yes, then they will grow up. Then they will produce bellies. And then they will try to slow down until they reach back and become very a mat mature adults and also very old. Then they will get married at their old age, will produce a new baby here, and this is the cycle. Did you understand? 
So the slowing down process is just spending time in your life until you reach to this region and become very old. Then you are not allowed to get married here. You are allowed to get married here, of course, hopefully not all of you. So in this region, you will start producing again babies, but at old age, and they will be fast again. So this is how we will look at it. So how we will write the equation for the diffusion equation for the fast for the thermal energy region. I am afraid this will fall on my head. Then I will not be here next time. So try to be far away from this stuff. So it will be D1C nabla square phi one C minus sigma one C multiplied by phi one C plus eta epsilon sigma two FC multiplied by phi two C equal to zero. This is the equation where fast or thermal, what's one? One stand for fast. So this is the diffusion equation for what? For the fast. This is the leakage term in the fast. This is what? Absorption term in the fast. And what's the source term in the fast? Fission. But the fission comes from what? From the absorption and the what? And the thermal. This is why we have this term. So an equation that has phi one and phi two in the same equation. So we need one more equation to be able to solve what? To solve this equation. The other equation, what do you expect? Should be what? Should be D2C nabla square phi 2C minus sigma 2C phi 2C. So this is the leakage. This is the absorption. And then we have to get the source. The source is what? slowing down. So if we have phi 1c multiplied by sigma 1c, this is the total interaction where in the fast energy region. When you multiply this by the probability that they will escape resonance, escape probability, if they will be able to escape the resonance, they will reach to what? To the thermal energy. So this is the source for what? Of course, you can transform this equation. What's K? K infinity is what? Eta epsilon multiplied by what? F multiplied by P. Yes? So I can transform my equation So this is sigma 2 F C. So this is the absorption in the fast, in the thermal energy, in the fuel, in the core. Yes? If I remove F like here, so this is the what? Without F, this is the total absorption everywhere. Total absorption everywhere. Okay? So I can make F as equal to what? Sigma. F divided by sigma C. This is one, uh, two, sorry, and two. Because this is in the thermal energy region. So sigma two F C divided by sigma two C is equal to what? This value is what? F, yes? So what do you think? I can remove this and make it what? C. Eta epsilon. If I divide, if I divide this, if I multiply this by p and divide it by p, then I multiply it by sigma two c and I divide it by sigma two c. What's this? This is what f. And what's this? K infinity. So this would be what? K infinity divided by p. Multiplied by sigma 2c. Multiplied by phi 2c. So we can remove this and make it as plus k infinity over p multiplied by sigma 2c 
simplify to say equal to zero. And this is equation number one. And this is equation number two. Okay, guys. Again, how many equations again? Those are two equations. Then we will have another two equations for what? Exactly the same. I will write one of them. It's D2R, double square, Phi2R, minus Sigma2R, Phi2R, plus. This is the thermal energy equation in the reflector. Yes? Yes? And I will have a source which is sigma 1r multiplied by phi 1r equal to 0. Where, where, what's the source of thermal energy? 2 is the, th is the what? Is the thermal energy. Yes? What's the source of thermal energy in the moderator? The only way that you will get thermal neutrons inside the moderator is from leakage from the reactor or the fast energy moderating to uh, the, the slow energy. Okay, guys? So this will be the term. I think I remember. I, maybe I forgot to put something like B here or whatever. I don't remember. I will check it next time. So you will have, again, uh, you do not have a, you do not have the only way that you will have faster, faster neutrons. This is the thermal. The only way that you have faster neutrons inside the reflector is if you have leakage from the reactor core. Fast, fast leakage from the reactor core. This is the only way that you will have uh, equation for the, uh, for the leakage, for the uh, faster neutrons. Okay, guys? But let's assume that if we are talking about infinite reactor and we are talking about two group without the reflector, those are the two equations. Okay? And this is second order equation and this is what? Second order equation. If you have two second order equation, you can combine them and you will produce what? Fourth order differential equation. So it's complicated. The method, the, if you want to, to learn more how to solve this equation, look at Lamarche reactor theory. So you will combine those and then you will solve them, them in a matrix format and it is a little bit difficult and you have graphical solution then you will look for criticality and so on. Okay, guys? Next time, it's up to you guys. We, st we still have three more lectures. I, I think we will have two, mo two lectures for the types of nuclear reactors. Then maybe I can, I prepare one lecture about the multi-group diffusion equation, how it looks like. Or if you want to make a review, just we'll, we'll, we'll sit down and just review the material. It's up to you. But you have to let me know before I before hand, so you have to let me know by today night because I have to prepare whatever I will give it to you. I have to prepare it, so just let me know. Yes. I would prefer it if else. Review is fine. Okay, so we'll try. We'll just we'll just. I will not prepare something special, but I will go through the material and then we will ask. Did you understand this? Did you understand that? Or or. If you have question before coming to the class, just send it to me by email and I will try to answer it during the class for you. Hey guys, have a good day and good weekend.